Hello dear students, I hope you, you are all doing good and today I am going to start my second lecture which is about urolithiasis and hydronephrosis. And now let's start our second lecture. Uh, urinary stone disease. Urinary calculi are the third most common affliction of the urinary tract. They are common in both animals and humans. As, as clinicians, we are concerned with an ex expedient diagnosis and efficient treatment. Equally important is a thorough medical evaluation direct directing appropriate medical therapy and lifestyle changes to help reduce recurrent stone disease. Without such follow-up and medical intervention, stone recurrence rates can be as high as 50% within five years. Renal and ureteral stones. Etiology, my, my, uh, mineralization in all biologic system has a common theme in that the crystals and matrix are intertwined. Intervined. Urinary stones are no ex exception. They are polycrystalline aggregates composed of varying amount of crystalloid and organic matrix. Theories to explain, explain urinary stone disease are incomplete. Stone formation requires supersaturated urine. Supersaturation super depends on urinary pH, iconic, ionic uh, strength, solute concentration, and complexation. The nucleation theory suggests that urinary stone originate from crystals for foreign bodies immersed in supersaturated urine. The crystal inhibitor theory claims that calculi from due to the absence of low concentration of natural stone inhibitors including magnesium, citrate, pyrophosphate, pyrophosphate and a variety of trace materials, metals. Crystal component. Stone are composed, composed primarily of crystalline component, components. However, how this early crystalline structure, structure are retained in the upper urinary tract without an eventful passage down to the ureter is unknown. The theory of mass precipitation or intranephronic calculosis suggests that the distal tubules are collecting ducts or both become plugged in crystals, thereby establishing an environment of stasis ripe for further stone growth. The explanation is unsatisfactory. Tubules are con conical in shape and enlarged as they enter the papilla, thereby reducing the possibility of ductal obstruction. In addition, urine transit time from the glomerulus into the renal pelvis is only a few minutes, making crystal aggregation and growth urine, the urine, u uriniferous tubules unlikely. The fixed practice theory postulates that formed crystals are somehow retained with cells or beneath tubular epithelium. Alexander Randall noted whitish yellow precipitation uh, of crystalline substance occurring on the tips of renal papilla as submucosal plaques. These plaques are associated with both the vars recta Vasarecta and the urinary collecting ducts and grow deep within the papilla. The tips of the plaques can be appreciated during endoscopy of the upper urinary tract. Matrix component. The amount of crystal, non-crystalline matrix component of urinary stone varies with stone type, commonly ranging from 2% to 10 by weight. It is composed predominantly of protein with small amount of hexo and hexamine. An unusual, an unusual type of stone called a matrix calculus can be associated with previous kidney surgery or chronic urinary tract infection and has a gelatinous texture. On plain abdominal radiograph, uh, matrix calculi are usually radiolucent and can be confused with other feeling defects. 
including blood clot clots, upper tract tumors, and fungal disorders. Non-contrast computer tomography reveals calcifications and can help to confirm the diagnosis. The role of matrix in the initiation of ordinary urinary stone as well as matrix stones is unknown. Urinary ions. We can see here uh, several urinary ions which calcium, oxalate, phosphate, uric acid, sodium, citrate, magnesium, sulfate, and other stone inhibitors. Stone varieties. Uh, calcium calculi calcification can occur, accumulate in the collecting system, resulting in nephrolithiasis. 80 to 85 percent of all stones are calcareous. This stone this uh, Scott uh, abdominal radio radiograph demonstrating bilateral multiple renal cal calculi in patient with renal tubular, tubular ac acidosis type 1. Uh, here we see in both kidneys um, are filled with, are full of stones. And also we see on the left side uh, there is a placed double J stent on the left kidney. Non-calcium calculi, uh, some of the non-calcium calculi are struvite, uric acid, and cysteine. Struvite stones are composed of magnesium, ammonium, and phosphate. They are found in commonly in women and may recur rap rapidly. They frequently present at, uh, as a renal stack on uh, configured calculi and rarely present as obstructing ureteral stones except after sur surgical intervention. Struvite stones are infectious stones associated with urea splitting organisms, including Proteus, Pseudomonas, Provincia, Klebsiella, Staphylococcus, and Mycoplasma. Uric acid stones uh, comprise less than 5% of urinary calculi and are usually found in men, patients with gout, myeloproliferative disease, or rapid weight loss, and those treated for malignant condition with cytotoxic drugs have an increased in, uh, incidence of uric acid ethiosis. Cystine stones, crystalline uh, cystine lithiasis is secondary to an inborn error of metabolism resulting in abnormal intestinal mucosal absorption and renal tubular absorption of um, debasic amino acids including cysteine, ornithine, lysine, and arginine. And here we see two plain abdominal films. Uh, this one shows that multiple stones, or, and actually staccord stones in both kidney, uh, these stones are st struvite staccord calculus. And on the other, in this image, we see again plain abdominal mm, uh, film, which shows uh, right cystine stone, roughly about three or four centimeters. Uh, symptom and signs at presentation: patients uh, with urinary stone are comes to the clinic with pain, hematuria, infection even sometimes associated fever, and also nausea and vomiting, also mm, the one of the main uh, complaints between patients. Pain, renal colic, and non-colic renal pain are the two types of pain originating from kidney renal colic, usually caused by stretching of the collecting system or ureter, whereas non-colic renal pain is caused by distension of the renal capsule. These symptoms may overlap, making a clinical differentiation difficult or impossible. Renal colic does not always wax and wane or come in waves, mm, like intestinal or biliary colic, but may be relatively constant. Renal colic implies, to, implies an intraluminal or origin. Patients with renal calculi have pain preliminary due to urinary obstruction. The vast majority of urinary stones present with an acute onset of 
pain due to acute obstruction and distension of upper urinary tract. The severity and location of the pain can vary from patient to patient due to stone size, stone location, degree of obstruction, acuity of obstruction, and variation in individual anatomy. For example, it, depend, it can vary in intrarenal or extrarenal patients. Small ureteral stone frequently present with a severe pain, whereas large tacon config, uh, configured calculi may present with a dull ache, dull ache or flank discomfort. Here we can see some images of stones in the ureter. These symptoms of acute renal colic depends on the location of calculus. Several regions may be involved, like renal calyx, uh, renal pelvis, upper and mid ureter, and distal ureteral stones. On the first image picture, we can see that there is a stone located in uh, upper ureter, or actually in the ureteropelvic junction, and the pain of this stone could radiate actually most of the time in lumbar area. But in the second picture we see a stone located in middle ureter, so mid ureteric stone uh, caused here ureterohydronephrosis, ureterohydronephrosis because dilatation are about to mid ureter. Uh, and this stone is stuck uh, about uh, iliac crossing of this ureter. Uh, on the third image, we see a distal ureteric stone, stone just about to enter the urinary bladder. This kind of mm, stones also cause generally ureterohydronephrosis and causes strong pain, especially radi radi radiating to lumbar area as well as full abdominal cavity and even external genitalia. Hematuria, a complete urinalysis helps to confirm the diagnosis of urine stone by ascending for hematuria and crystalluria and documenting urinary pH. Uh, a patient frequently admit to intermittent gross hematuria or occasional tea-colored urine or blood. Most patients will have at least mic microhematuria. Rarely complete oretral obstruction pres presents without microhematuria. Infection. Magnesium, ammonium phosphate, struvite stones are synonyms with infectious stones. They are commonly associated with proteins, pseudomonas, and other mm, infection, and other micro, my, bacteria. The obstructive calculi may culminate in the development of uh, pyonephrosis, xanthogranomatose, pyonephritis, or sepsis. Associated fever. The association of urinary stone with Fever is a relatively medical emergency. Signs of clinical sepsis are variable and include fever, tachycardia, hypotension, and cutaneous vasodilatation. Costovertebral angle tenderness may be marked with acute upper tract obstruction. However, it cannot be relied upon to the presenting instance of long-term obstruction. In such instance, a mass may be palpated, palpable, resulting from a grossly hydronephrotic kidney. Fever associ associated with urinary tract obstruction requires, requires prompt decompression. This may be accomplished with a retrograde catheter. If retrograde manipulations are unsuccessful, insertion of percutaneous nephrostomy tube is required. N nausea and vomiting. Upper tract obstruction is frequently uh, associated with nausea and vomiting. Intravenous fluid, fluid are required to restore an evolemic state. Intravenous fluids should be not, shouldn't 
be used to force diuresis in, a, in an attempt to, to push the ureteral stone down to the ureter. Effective ureteral peristalsis require co cooptation of the ureteral, ureteral wall and is most effective in evolemic state. Here we can see the plain abdominal film uh, and this bilateral, in this film we see bilateral renal calcoli which also placed mm, bilateral double nephrostomy just because of this pyonephritic patient. And dear students, now I'm going to show the uh, special situations, like uh, just because of these stone diseases. As we know, the uh, urinary stem is about renal pelvis, uh, kidneys, ureter, and bladder, and urethra and male external genitalia. Uh, here we have kidneys, ureters, and bladder image picture. So we know that uh, anatomically ureter has three narrow, narrowed parts. First narrow part is located in ureteropelvic location. When the renal pelvis enters to ureter, there is a first narrow part. Second narrow part is about common iliac, iliac arterial crossing of the ureter. Urinary bladder, there is another, there is third narrow part which uh, most of the time stones can stuck there and can cause severe pain. Mm. So here we see three stones which located in three different narrowed parts of the ureter. So mm, if the stone located just upper ureter, then hydronephrosis will occur. But if the stone located in mid ureter or in lower ureter, so um, ureter will get dilated as well as renal pelvis. In this situation, we call it hydroureteronephrosis. Uh, in stones which caused sepsis or pyelonephritis, we need to perform some emergency procedures like double J stenting or placing a percutaneous nephrostomy. Why we do need to do this? Because the stone causes obstruction, stasis, and uh, the urine above the obstruction become infected and pyelonephritis start. Uh, if pyelonephritis starts, patient can go to sepsis. We need to relieve the symptoms or relieve the ur urine as soon as possible. We have two options. First option, we endoscopically can enter with, instru with our instrument and we put a double J stent just to relieve the urine. We will place double, we will endoscopically send the double J stent and the double J stent should pass the stone and should reach to renal pelvis in order to obtain the passage. Uh, but in some instances, for this uh, procedure, we sometimes may need operation setting. Most of the time we need operation setting and sometimes we may need even uh, sedation or anesthesia. If the patient is septic, we cannot give the patient anesthesia. In that case, we will go for placing nephrostomy tube. The mm, small tube which can be placed from the lumbar area, which we call it nephrostomy. It is better to try double J stent if you can do it. If the stone is stuck and very hard stone, then it is not easy to place double J stent. Then we go to nephrostomy. Both of the procedure can maintain the drainage. And after this drainage, we can 
um, start directly broad spe spectrum antibiotics and just before starting antibiotics we need to take urine culture from the nephrostomy or from the urine right after placing double J or nephrostomy. So in this image we also see kidney stones which is located lower callus, middle callus or in upper renal callus. Uh, we also see here a uh, huge stack on calculus in left kidney. If the, if the stone is filling, if the stone is filling uh, more than two renal calluses or whole calluses, we call it stack on calculus. And now we can continue our slides. In stone patients, we have special situ situations such as uh, stone disease in renal transplantation patients. In urinary stones associated with renal transplantation uh, are re very rare. Classic renal colic is not found in these patients. The patients are usually admitted with the presumptive diagnosis of graft, graft rejection. Only after appropriate radiographic and ultrasonographic evaluation will correct diagnosis is made. Pregnancy. Renal colic is the most common non-obstetric cause of acute abdominal pain during pregnancy. Despite marked hypercalciuria associated with pregnancy, calculi are relatively rare with an incidence of approximately 1 in 1,500 pregnancies. Women with known urinary stone disease do not have an increased risk of stone during pregnancy. Initial investigation can be undertaken with renal ultrasonography. Treatment requires balancing the safety on the fetus with the health of the mother. Temporizing measures to relieve upper tract obstruction with a double J stent or a percutaneous nephrostomy can uh, be performed under local anesthesia. Treatment usually can be delayed until after delivery. Here we can see Scott uh, radiogram demonstrating left renal calculus with the double J stent placed and we also see here the skeletal structures of fetus. Uh, here we see the severe kyphosis patient has kidney stone and this is a patient which has severe kyphosis. Pediatric patients, urinary calculi are usual in ch children. A full and thorough metabolic evaluation should be undertaken. Stone analysis is particularly helpful in directing this investigation. Children born prematurely and given furosemide with while the neonatal, neonatal intensive care unit are at increased risk of developing urinary stone disease. Treatment may be limited by endoscope size. Preliminary Data shows no change in renal growth after shockwave lithotripsy. Urinary stone can mimic other retroperitoneal and uh, peritoneal uh, pathologic states. A full differential diagnosis of the acute abdomen should be made, including acute appendicitis, ectopic and unrecognized pregnancies, ovarian pathologic conditions, including twisted ovarian cysts, diverticular disease, bowel obstruction, by biliary stone with without obstruction, peptic ulcer disease, acute renal artery embolism, and abdominal aortic aneurysm, to mention a few. Peritoneal signs should be sought during physical ex examination. A proper evaluation requires a thorough medical history X fact crystalluria, socioeconomic factors, diet, occupation, climate, family, 
history and medication should be documented. Uh, physical examination, a detailed physical examination is an essential component of the evolution of any patient suspected of having a urinary calculus, fever, hypotension, and cutaneous vasodilatation may be apparent in patient with urosepsis. In such instances, there is an urgent need for decompression of the obstructed urinary tract, massive intravenous fluid resuscitation, and intravenous antibiotics. Occasionally, intensive care support is needed. Also, abdominal examination should be should exclude other causes of abdominal pain, incarcerated inguinal hernias, epididymitis, orchitis, and female pelvic pathologist states may mimic urinary stone disease. Radiologic investigations. The non-contrast spiral computer tomography, now the imaging modality of choice in patient presenting with acute renal colic. It is rapi rapid and now it is less expensive than an intravenous pilogram. It is made other peritoneal and retroperitoneal structures and help with mm, the diagnosis is uncertain. There is no need for intravenous contrast. Uric acid stones are visualized no differently from calcium oxalate. Hansfeld unit can help predict stone type and hardness. IVP can sim simultaneously document nephrolytiasis and upper tract anatomy. It is rarely used today with the widespread, availabil widespread availability of CT scan and ultrasound. QUB films and directed ultrasonography also mm, useful for diagnosis. Retrograde, retrograde pilography uh, occasionally is required during to delineate upper, upper tract anatomy and localize small or radiolucent offending calculi. Here we see um, left stacon calculus, and this is a nuclear scintigraphic evaluation of renal calculi. As you see, there is decreased function of the kidney. And this image shows us uh, three computer tomography patients. In this film, we see ureteric stone in, located in upper ureta. Uh, it also caused uh, parenchymal atrophy in uh, left kidney, so there is a hydroureteronephrosis can be seen. And the second image also we see mid-ureteric stone. It's a quite a big stone located almost in mid-ureter. It also caused ureteral hydronephrosis and severely damaged kidney on the left side. On the third image, we see axial image of computer tomography. This is also reveals um, right ureteric stone, as you can see here. And here we see three different computer tomography films. Uh, this one shows uh, non-contrast computer tomography image. This is also axial image, uh, and this shows us small stone loca located in renal pelvis, and there is a quite big stone about one centimeter or 1.5 uh, 15 or actually 15 millimeter size stone located in ureteral pelvic junction. And the second image shows, um, this one is contrast en enhanced computer tomography film as we see the aorta filled with contrast and also kidneys are contrasted. The color differences between these two images are visible. Um, we also see the dilated ureter which filled with contrast and we can see grade 1 hydronephrosis on 
the left kidney, but there is not obvious stone because of this contrast enhancement. Can hide this small stones, and we also see it here a small, very small, simple cyst, renal cyst on the right side. And this one is liver. Uh, so in this film we see these two arrows shows this one also contrast enhanced computer tomography in both ureter are visible with field contrast and on the left side there is mild hydrourethral necrosis and this one is also liver so we can understand that which kidney is left or which one is right in the next slide, we can see double J stent and we can see this one is plain abdominal film or kidney ureter, ureter bladder film. Uh, this one is uh, Stockholm calculus located in left kidney and this one is also stone in stone, small uh, stones, multiple small stones located in right kidney. Uh, we also see the place double J stent to the right kidney and this is the image of the location and staying of double J stent in the kidney and this one is the double J and this one the image shows us the percutaneous nephros uh, nephrostomy we pl place it from the uh, lumbar area. Uh, this one is placing uh, shows how it stays in the body. Intervention. Conservative of observation. Uh, observation. Most ureteral calculi pass and do not require intervention. Spontaneous uh, passage depends on stone size, shape, location, and associated ureteral edema. edema. Uh, ureteral calculi about 5 mm or smaller have 40 to 50 percent chance of spontaneous passage. In contrast, calculi less than, big, bigger than uh, 6 mm have a 15 percent chance of spontaneous passage. This does not mean that one centimeter stone will not pass or uh, one or two millimeter stone will always pass uneventfully. Medical expulsive therapy helps facilitate spontaneous passage of ureteral stones. An alpha blocker non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication with or without low dose steroids is now becoming standard care of care to optimize spontaneous ureteral stone passage. The vast majority of stones that pass to within six weeks period after the onset of symptoms. Ureteral calculi, calculi discovered in the distal ureter, ureter at the time of presentation have 50% chance of spontaneous passage. In contrast, 20% 5% and 10% chance in the middle and proximal ureta, respectively. Relief of obstruction. As I mentioned before, urinary stone disease may result in significant morbidity and possible morbidity in the presence of obstruction, especially with concurrent infection. A patient with obstructive urinary calculi with a fever and infected urine requires emergency drainage this could be placing double J stand or placing nephrostomy tube. Extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy, we call it SWL. Has this, one, this technique has revolutionized the treatment of urinary stones. The concept of using shock wave waves to fragment stones was noticed in 1950 in Russia. The first clinical application with successful fragmentation of renal calculi was in 1980. 
all require an emergency source to cre create the shock wave a coupling mechanism to transfer the energy from outside to inside the body and either fluoroscopic or ultrasonic model, modes or both to identify and position the calculi at a focus of conver converging shock waves. The procedure does not require any anesthesia most of the time. Uh, during this procedure we will spontaneously, simultaneously we can use fluoroscopic imaging and ultrasound imaging. And now we can start to talking about uh, endoscopic procedures. Uh, starting with endoscopic procedures, we will start to talk about uh, ureteroscopic stone extractions. Ureteroscopic stone extraction is highly efficient for lower ureter calculus. The use of small caliber ureteroscopes and the advent of balloon dilatation or ureteral access shape have increased stone free rate dramatically. Even relatively large caliber endoscopes without a balloon dilatation are effective in lower ureter stone retrieval. Stone free rates appro approach 95 to 100% and are dependent on stone, stone burden and location. Length of time the stone has been impacted, the history of retroperitoneal surgery and the experience of the operator. Complication rates are rare. The rare increase when rare, the rates increase when manipulation manipulations venture into the proximal ureter. Calculus that measures six to eight millimeter are frequently removed intact. Nitinol basket can be used as a stone basket. Excessive force with an instrument in the ureter may result in ureteral calculi. A variety of lithotrites can be used through ureteroscope, solid and hollow core ultrasonic probes, a variety of laser uh, systems and pneumatic systems such as the Swiss lithoclast. Ultrason ultrasonic lithotrites have a piezo-keramic energy source that converts electric energy into the ultrasound waves. This vibra vibratory action is effective in fragmenting calculus. Hollow probes can su suction stones, fragments, and debris simultaneously. Laser systems, especially holmium, are the most common lithotrace to fragment calculi. Here are the uh, two ureteroscopes we can see. On this uh, left side, we can see rigid ureteroscope. With this ureteroscope, we can uh, perform endoscopic uh, stone surgeries, especially located in ureter and renal pelvis. We can we can introduce our laser or pneumatic pneumatic probes in inside the, of this instrument and start performing lithotropy for the stones. Uh, after procedure, we can use this kind of forceps to retract and remove the stone particles from the ureter, ureter if, or even from the renal pelvis. In the second image we see flexible ureteroscope. With the help of this flexible ureteroscope we can perform the operation for kidney stones up to 2.5 centimeters. And after the, proce after the procedure we can hold the stone particles with this uh, kind of knitting on baskets and we can remove the stones from the kidney. Here we can see the procedure image shows the procedure of ureteroscopic uh, surgery and on the next image we can see the flexible ureteroscope. Oh, for the kidney stones we use flexible uh, ureteroscope because it has flexible tip which can reach even uh, lower calluses or any other upper or middle calluses of the kidney and we can find the stone in the calluses and introduce our very thin laser probes and start uh, performing lithotripsy with the help of this instrument. And after the procedure we usually place double J and the small stone fragments pass easily. 
This is the operation setting for flexible ureteroscopy of the kidney, and this is the small stone fragments are seen in this endoscopic image. These are the little trips tors which we use in urology. This is a homeomonasis which we perform ureteric stone lithotripsy with it or even sometimes kidney stone. This is a pneumatic lithotriptor. This is a rigid. We can use this lithotripsy only in ureter for ureter stones or for kidney stones during the percutaneous surgery. And this is a, another uh, lithotriptor. We call it ultrasonic, ultrasonic lithotriptor. It has hollow part and uh, we, it can break the stone simultaneously and also absorb the small particles. And now we will talk about the kidney stones and uh, operations for kidney stones. Uh, for kidney stones we perform, especially if the stone size is bigger than 2.5 uh, centimeters, we perform percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Uh, we perform percutaneous nephrolithotomy as uh, the patient which failed shockwave lithotripsy or which is not suitable for um, flexible ureteroscopy. How do we perform this uh, procedure? Uh, the percutaneous nephrolithotomy uh, starts with lit lithotomy position. Uh, we placed, first of all, we place ureter catheter, catheter to the ureter. Uh, why do we do it? Because we uh, have to, during the procedure, we have to get the image of collecting system in order to obtain a puncture to the kidney. Mm, after placing the ureter catheter to the ureter, we turn the patient's position to uh, prone position and then we place the fluoroscope and under the fluoroscopic guidance and filling the collecting system with contrast, uh, we start to perform a, a puncture to desired kidney, desired actually callus. Uh, we most of the time perform to make a puncture from lower callus with the help of fluoroscopic imaging and start to introduce this needle from the skin to the collecting system. So once we, under fluoroscopic guidance, uh, we think that we enter the collecting system, uh, then we remove this inner part of this mm, needle and there is a hole in this needle uh, allows urine to come out of the kidney. Once we see urine coming from out of the kidney, we understand that we are inside the kidney and then we place this sensory, soft sensory guide wire into the collecting system and then we also remove the remaining part of this, this needle. After that, we start to perform dilatation in order to uh, enter the kidney. We can do dilatation. Mm. So we remove this uh, needle and uh, our sensory guide wire inside this, um, inside, inside the collecting system and it will help us to enter the kidney and start dilatation. We will start to dilatate kid kidney with this di uh, different size dilata dilators. Uh, we start with smaller size. Uh, first we place this dilator or dilator over this guide, sensory guide wire, and then we increase the numbers up until 30 French, which equals to one centimeter in diameter, and after 30 French di dilatation, we place this unplugged sheet to the collecting system, uh, and then we start performing procedures. This um, procedure doesn't take a long time because. Uh, 
dilatation procedure is not very small, uh, slow procedure. So now, once we obtained 30 fringe dilatation and placed amplat sheath, we uh, can now enter the kidney with uh, this nephroscope. With this nephroscope, we can find the stone in the kidney and we can introduce our lithotriptor, which is ultrasonic lithotriptor. We will start um, breaking the stone and we, because of the amplat sheath, we can help uh, we can remove the small stone particles from the kidney. Now, so at the end of the procedure, we always uh, place the nephrostomy for the couple of the days, for a couple of the days, just to get optimal healing. Mm, open surgery for stone disease nowadays are very rare. Uh, ureter lithotomy and or pyelolithotomy is um, was widely used years ago. The morbidity of this incision and possibility of retained stone fragments and the ease and success of less invasive techniques have made these procedures rare. When we finish our procedure, we need to start our prevention uh, in order to stop recurrences or minimize recur recurrences. In general, 50% of patients experience recurrent urinary stone within five years without prophylactic intervention. Appropriate education and preventive measures are best instituted with a motivated patient after spontaneous stone passage or surgical stone removal. Uh, patient fluid intakes, intake should be around two liter a day. Metabolic evaluation, a systemic metabolic evaluation and a stone analysis should be obtain, obtained. Oral medication, as a oral medication, we start uh, potassium citrate is an oral agent that elevates urinary pH effectively by 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 pH units Care should be taken in patients um, susceptible to hypokalemia, those with renal failure and, failure and those taking potassium citrate sparing diuretics. Uh, we can, most of the time, we start this kind of uh, agents to the patient which has uh, recurrent uh, uric acid stones, bladder stones. Uh, bladder calculi are a uh, manifestation of underlying pathologic condition, including voiding, dysfunction, or foreign body. Most commonly, bladder calculi are seen in men in developing countries. They are frequently found in prepubescent uh, pre boys. Stone analysis frequently reveals ammonium urate urate, uh, uric acid, or calcium oxalate stones. Bladder stones can be solitary or numerous. Patient presence with irritative voiding symptoms, intermittent urinary stream, urinary tract infection, hematuria, or pelvic pain. Physical examination is unrevealing. A large percentage of bladder stones are radiolucent uric acids. Mm, ultrasound of the bladder spe specific uh, bladder and identifies the stone. Uh, lithotripsy allows more stone to be bra um, broken and subsequently removed through a cystoscope. Laser and pneumatic lithotrites can be used for lithotripsy. Cystolithotomy also can be performed through a small abdominal incision for uh, bladder stones. Urethral calculi uh, usually originate from the bladder and rarely from the upper tract. Most urethral stones that pass spontaneously into the bladder can pass through the urethra unimpeded. Urethral stones may develop secondary to urinary stasis, secondary to urethral diverticulum, near urethral structures, or a site of previous surgery. Most urethral stones in men present in prostatic or bubar region and are solitary. Females rarely develop urethral calculi. Most urethral calculi found, found in uh, women are associated with urethral diverticula. 
Symptoms are similar to blood calculum, intermittent urinary stream, terminal hematuria, and infection. The stones may present with dribbling or during acute urinary retention. Pain may be severe and in men may radiate to the tip of the penis. Diagnosis may be confirmed by palpation, endoscopic visualization, or radiologic study. Treatment should be directed by the underlying causes. Stones associated with dense urethral stricture, stricture or complex diverticula can be removed during definitive open surgery call repair. Small stones may be grasped successfully and removed intact. More frequently, they need to be fragmented and removed. Large embedded stones are best removed through a urethrotomy. Uh, now we can pass to our lecture's second part, which is about urinary obstruction stasis and hydronephrosis. When we talk about urethral obstruction, it usually leads to uh, hydronephrosis, kidney atrophy that terminate in renal failure. Furthermore, obstruction often is co uh, complicated by infection, which cause abdominal damage, additional damage to the organs involved. Classification Obstruction may be classified according to cause, congenital or acquired, as a duration, acute or chronic, uh, for the degree, partial or complete, and for the level of um, obstruction can be upper or lower urinary tract. It, as etiology, congenital um, obstruction, the common site of congenital narrowing are the external meatus in boys or just inside the external urinary meatus in girls, the distal urethra, posterior urethral valves, ectopic ureters, ureteral cells, and ureterovesical and ureteropelvic junctions. Acquired obstruction are numerous and may be primarily in the urinary tract or secondary to retroperitoneal lesions that invade or compress the urinary passage. Among the common causes are urethral stricture secondary to infection or injury, benign prostatic hyperplasia or cancer of the prostate, vesical, vesical tumor involving the bladder neck or one or both urethral orifices, local extension of cancer of the prostate or cervix into the base of the bladder, occluding the ureters, compression of the ureters at the pelvic brain by metastatic, metastatic nodes from cancer of the prostate or cervix, uh, ureteral stone retroperitoneal fibrosis or malignant tumors, and pregnancy and neurogenic bladder also causes bilateral hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis, the pressure with the renal pelvis is normally close, close to zero. When this pressure increase becomes because of obstruction or reflex, renal pelvis and calyces dilate. The degree of hydronephrosis that develops depends on the urination, uh, duration, degree, and the site of obstruction. The higher the obstruction, the greater the effect of the kidney. In the earlier stages, the renal pelvis muscul musculature in the undergoes compensatory hypertrophy in its effort to force urine past the obstruction. Later, however, the muscle becomes stretched, atonic, and decompensated. Here we can see the grade, grading of hydronephrosis as starting grade 1 is mild hydronephrosis and grade 4 almost renal atrophy can be seen as cortical thinning. Here in this image we can see uh, starting from grade 1 to grade 4 hydronephrosis just because of this ureteric stone. Actually, the, here we can also see hydroureteronephrosis and tortoised ureters. Mm. The principal complaints uh, in hydronephrosis or in hydroureteronephrosis are pain in the flank radiating along the course of the ureter, gross or total hematuria, gastrointestinal symptoms, chills, fever, burning on urination, and cloudy urine with one set of infection, which is the common sequel of obstruction or vesicoureteral reflux. 
nausea, vomiting, loss of weight and strength, and pallor are due to uremia secondary to, secondary to bilateral hydronephrosis. An enlarged kidney may be discovered by palpation or percussion. Uh, renal tenderness may be elected to infection in present. Uh, here we, we can see some laboratory findings and urinary tract imaging for uh, hydronephritic patients. Especially plain abdominal film of the abdomen may show enlargement of renal shadows. IVP reveal almost the entire story unless renal function is severely impaired. They are more informative when partial obstruction is present because uh, the radiopic material is retained. CT, magnetic resonance imaging and sonography can also help determine the extent of dilatation and parenchymal atrophy. CT with and without contrast is best modality. DTPA and the MAC3 are the most commonly used in the evaluation of obstruction. As a treatment, uh, we can say about the resolved main cause of obstruction and stasis. Once the obstruction is removed, every effort should be made to eradicate infection. So I, we have reached to the end of our uh, lecture. I hope you enjoyed and you learned a lot today's, from today's lecture and hope to see you again soon.